In the USA, inflation numbers have come in for the CPI at a scorching hot 8.3%. And then if we look at the core inflation, that is up 6.3%. And for August and the month itself, it became on the core inflation up 0.6%. For just that month, which came in a lot hotter than what economists were expecting. They only expected a 0.3% increase. And this is cause for speculation that the Federal Reserve in America may raise the interest rates 100 basis points or 1% in one go. And what this spells for Nvidia, AMD and Intel as tech companies, I'm pretty sure they're sitting down right now sweating from these scorching hot numbers. So in today's video, we are going to go over all the implications this has not only for these tech companies, but for you as an individual and where you can expect tech prices to go. So let's discuss right after this sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. So this 8.3% figure, this comes off the back of a really high number already. In July, the Federal Reserve already raised interest rates previously by 75 basis points. And now it's looking like those interest rates will go up to 3%, which means that a lot of people who are in heavy amounts of debt may find themselves in a very tricky situation, especially those people last year in 2021 who took out massive mortgages. They've seen the rate of their repayments increase much more than that 3% interest rate rise. Some people have seen their mortgage repayments actually double, and this essentially puts a squeeze on the average individual because what people are wondering is well brian surely intel amd and nvidia they'll just pass on the higher costs with inflation onto the end user and they've got two choices they can do that and just find themselves having a lot less business or they can drop their margins and be forced to compete meaning the end user will get better value however it looks like some of the companies are trying to push the former in that they'll just pass on the cost and here's where they're making a really big mistake because if we look at the average wage index for 2022, August versus last year, that's only up 5.2%. Now this index can be heavily skewed, for instance, by CEOs and other executives that have on average gotten nearly a 40% pay rise. And so that can heavily skew that data. As opposed to the inflation data, everyone feels that, especially the lower and middle class, they'll feel that a lot more because their real-time earnings are going down. However, as opposed to the inflation numbers, here is where the rich don't distort this anywhere near the levels that they distort these average increases in wages, for example. And what I mean by this is that, for instance, the average person goes to the supermarket, doesn't matter if they're a rich person or a middle class or a lower class person, they're gonna buy an apple. And so the rich person isn't gonna buy 10 apples and chuck nine in the bin. That's just not how humans work. So it could easily be said that the rich don't skew the inflation numbers anywhere near the likes that they would skew the average wage increase of 5.2%. To make matters even worse with these inflation numbers, a lot of the times things are hidden via a thing called shrinkflation. That is, for instance, if you've got a 500 gram packet of cereal, they'll instead put 450 grams in there and then give it the same price. And then people will say, oh, well, the price hasn't increased. But technically that's roughly around 10% inflation because you are not getting 500 grams anymore. You're getting 450 grams. So now relating that bogus 5.2% wage increase and then the underreported inflation numbers back to a company like Intel, Nvidia or AMD, when they're selling graphics cards to people, they will now be met with a consumer that now has less discretionary income. In other words, their real wages have gone down. And so this means that the average individual can now no longer go out and buy that $500 graphics card. Perhaps they wanna get a $200 graphics card because they cannot afford that $500 graphics card. And what we saw in relation to Nvidia is almost one of the worst situations they could have put themselves in going into 2022 because they sold a lot of hardware and higher end hardware that had a higher cost price than what they would used to be selling. Say for instance, in the past, they sold a lot of GTX 1060s and RTX 2060s but this time around, they re-diverted a lot of that silicon towards the higher end models like the 3080 and 3080 Ti. The miners bought all those up and now the miners, now that the Ethereum merge is finished, they're dumping that stock back on the market and Nvidia has an oversupply 
of those higher end cards. So you've seen the prices drastically drop on the higher end stuff whilst remain quite considerably high on things like your RTX 3050 and 3060. And so this is bringing about a very tough time for Nvidia where they've got these new cards and then they've got pressure from the used market undermining their sales prices that have already dropped drastically from where they were two months ago. And so this is making a perfect scenario for someone to go out and pick out a bargain if they've been saving throughout 2021 and they didn't give into those 3X MSRP hype prices and FOMO prices that a lot of people were pushing on the market at the time. And if you thought that was the end of the problem for the tech giants, here is where things get worse. And that is inflation is eating out the lower end of the market. And what I mean by this is if Nvidia packages a graphics chiplet for a company to sell, say for instance, the GTX 1630, it's gonna have a really bad price tag attached to it because everything in the pipeline, as we said, with those misrepresented CPI numbers, I think they're actually much higher than they are. All those costs involved in getting that chiplet shipped out from the manufacturer to the end user, all those prices have absolutely skyrocketed, meaning that it's not really viable for these companies to produce those lower end products because the margins are so low. And so this has forced them as well to take that initiative to try and sell people higher end products, but now they just simply can't afford it. Double down with the fact that the rich people, just like they buy the one apple at the supermarket instead of buying 10 apples, they're not gonna go out and buy 10 graphics cards when they only need one. That's just not how it works. But apparently in this case, the more you buy, the more you save. This is like common sense. Whew. You're sitting back in your chair with a sigh of relief now. The negative news is all finished. And unfortunately, it even gets worse where the RTX 4000 series, at least the 4090, is looking like it's coming into that $2,000 USD price tag. Now, in Australia, we've heard leaks of $4,000 Aussie dollar pricing. We've seen leaks of the size of these graphics cards and they are gigantic. So it does look like that 2000 USD price tag is gonna be a baseline. That's gonna be where these cards are starting from. And here is where the big problem starts to hit, not just with that less income that the average individual has to buy these products, but also the impulsive buyers really get left out of the market at 2000 US dollars. It doesn't matter who you are in the world, you're gonna look at that 2000 USD price tag and say, do I need this? Is it something that's going to give me a $2,000 benefit where I might need that cash for something else or do I just wait? And so the consumer has gone from impulsive in 2021 and 2020 to now being the opposite and being very cautious and very pessimistic. And so that's a hard thing for Nvidia, Intel and AMD to break where every month you're getting these numbers that are coming in at 8.3% or over 8% and they're just scorching hot inflation numbers. Though speaking of those inflation numbers and going forward, the outlook is actually getting worse than I previously thought. And that's because the Fed are now looking to go to tighten even more. And what people need to be aware of is that it's not so much the interest rate increases at this time that could hurt a lot of people. It's actually if they decide to change their stance on how much they decide to tighten. In other words, how much money they decide to start destroying. If they accelerate this pace to tame that inflation, you could see a massive margin call catastrophe, which is what I've been predicting previously on the channel here. I think something like that is gonna take event either later on this year or next year, and that's gonna cause markets to go into a tailspin on the way down. So what you wanna be aware of is if you've got some of these things, if you're a crypto bro, and actually I was on Son of a Tech's live stream just trying to get the word out and trying to tell people to be a little bit cautious and not put all their eggs in one basket. I was kind of met with a lot of hate on their, on their chat, which was actually kind of amusing. <laughs> and sometimes it's good to play a villain in a different world. Yeah, you gotta play that villain, but I just like to tell people how it is. And actually a lot of you guys are appreciating this news and this advice because my opinion is things are going to get worse just because the monetary conditions are getting a lot worse. And what ultimately happens with that contraction of monetary policy 
is deflation. It is a deflationary event, but the problem is this time around, we've got governments that are severely restricting and choking supply artificially and causing small and medium-sized businesses to really do it tough. And so when you're choking the supply faster than you're choking monetary policy, then that's gonna to lead to ultimately inflation. And so if you have or haven't heard this term, inflationary depression, that's ultimately the base of where it's coming from. So with anything negative, there can always be something positive that comes out of it. And at Tech Yes City, I'm gonna be making sure I'm finding the best deals, talking to you guys about the latest metas that are gonna be coming through and reporting on it, on how you can build yourself the best price performance in the land of PC. Ultimately being aware of these events and knowing how to navigate through them. And if we come together as a community and share advice and share opinions, ultimately it's gonna make it so that we have the best community on the net. So love each and every one of you guys. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that like button and also ring that bell if you wanna get the videos as soon as they drop here at Tech Yes. And do let us know in the comments section below what you think about the economics mixed in with the tech. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like like this question of the day here, which comes from Case Fischl. And they ask, can we talk about the fact that Nvidia has already warehouses full of their 4,000 GPUs and plan on artificially starving out the market to drive prices back up? Now, I think lately there's this talk about Nvidia uh, manipulating the market and it depends where this manipulation is coming from. There's two scenarios for Nvidia and that is if they're reducing the production of the products that they're gonna be selling to the market or the board partners, or they're holding back supply that they already have to the market. And so if this is the latter, it's actually a stupid move from Nvidia. As we've discussed in this video, people can't afford those prices. It's just that simple. People don't need to desperately go out and buy a graphics card in troubling times. And if Nvidia thinks that's the case, then they're gonna be more inclined then to look on the used market and not give Nvidia a purchase at all. Though if it is the former and that Nvidia are now producing less because they're forecasting less demand, that's just business 101 because they cannot keep producing these products at the levels that they are because the market is just not gonna absorb them at the prices that they want for them. So they're going to have to find that balance, that equilibrium of supply versus demand to keep up the maximum amount of profit. Though in terms of starving out the market, it looks like Nvidia is in a really tough position where they could be faced with starving themselves out. Though if you guys wanna see a dedicated video towards this, we can talk about this more in depth. I'd love to do such a video for you guys. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. This is like common sense. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. That's right. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save.